I came here to see revival come to America. That's the only reason why I'm here. It's already here. I'm going to share with you keys to revival. You can have revival right here, right now, anywhere, if you have the keys. We're waiting for revival. Revival is waiting for us. And we can have it here right now, this morning. I believe a revival is coming here to Boston. Amen. It's coming here. There's going to be a wave of revival. You know, I love studying about revivals. I've seen God move with great revival in other countries. I was preaching in Pakistan just two years ago. In 20, and in fact, yeah, 2018, 2019, we saw crowds of up to 100,000 people. Praise the Lord. 30,000 people giving their lives to the Lord in one single night. I see 20,000 being baptized in the Holy Ghost in one night. 15,000 being healed miraculously in one night. So you say, well, what word do you have for America? How can we fix America? It's simple. Put Jesus back in every place where we've asked Him to leave. Home, church, government, and our own hearts. Hallelujah. We've got to be, put Jesus at the center. If we're not glorifying Jesus, we are not glorifying God. He is the focal point of the Godhead. When the Holy Spirit comes, He comes to manifest Jesus. He doesn't come to lift up your ministry. He doesn't come to bless your career. Praise the Lord. He blesses you. But Jesus didn't die so that you can have a career. He died to save the lost. And we must have a burden for the lost. And any church that doesn't carry a burden for the lost is lost themselves. We've got to focus on the lost. Jesus says, lift up your eyes and look at the harvest in John 4. Look, we're too busy looking in church, but look at the harvest. Look at the loss. It's white for reaping, for harvesting. There's never been a greater time to preach the gospel than now. But the worst thing we can do is stay silent. You know, I'm not into quiet revivals, by the way. I'm not into quiet, re you know, just button down. Or I've been hearing from theologians here, there's been a quiet revival the last week. Well, where is it? I don't see it. I want, I, how about a mighty rushing wind revival? How about suddenly, there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled the whole house and they all began to speak in other tongues. When revival hits, you speak. It's not quiet. It's noisy. You know, the last revival that took place in the city of Boston, you know when it was? The real revival. I'm talking Book of Acts revival, not none of these quiet revivals. It was a hundred years ago with D.L. Moody. Packed the streets. People coming from, traveling from all over New England to hear him preach. 20, 30,000 people at a time getting saved, born again, filled with the Spirit. Before that, it was Charles G. Finney. And before that even, it was George Whitfield in the 1600s, another British man from England. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. He came here and he preached on Boston Common. And I'm telling you, you can't have revival on your own terms. He preached, and it's in the history record books, nearly 30,000 people on Boston Common. As he's preaching, he moves his hand and tens of thousands of people fell out under the power of God. People scrambling up the trees to hear him preach. Benjamin Franklin said he's never heard such a loud voice from a loud man. 
signs and wonders, miracles, healings, baptisms of the Holy Ghost, people screaming. I'm talking about grown men growling in repentance on the streets. That's what revival looks like. They said of the Welsh revival with Roberts, Evan Roberts, that when he began to minister, people in, in, the, in, in the pubs, they, they went to grab their beers and their hands froze. I mean, it was there, but they, they couldn't quite get it to their face. They came under such conviction. Crime rates fell. In Rochester, New York, when Charles G. Finney went there for six months, the crime rate fell. Rapists stopped raping. Liars stopped lying. Thieves stopped thieving. This is evidence of revival, my friends. When you sent, when you get a sense of God's presence, you're going to react and understand the holiness of God. When you have an encounter with the almighty presence of God, you're going to understand that God is holy. But you know, when you have a throne room encounter, things begin to shake. Things begin to come alive. You can't stay the same. Dry bones come alive. We heard that song. They begin to rattle. Dead things come alive. And the Lord has spoken to me and said, just go and stir up the churches. Start lighting fires all across Boston and America. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm, I'm a Holy Ghost arsonist. And so should you be too. You will be and you are.